Hey guys, this video is with Heidi and she's the co-owner of C&G Consultants and they work with expats on their visas and other problems that they might have here dealing with government agencies. So in this video we talk about the different types of permanent retirement visas you can get. We talk about marriage license, driver's license, a 13A, uh, the regular tourist visa, and if you overstay. So let's get to the video. Hey everybody, today we're here with Heidi and we're going to answer some more questions. Hi. And <laughs> welcome back. Thank you for having me again. And this will be a little bit more in depth than your normal um, interview about visas. First, we'll start off with people are asking about the SMILE, mm -hmm. S R R V SMILE, which is for ages 35 and up. Mm -hmm. That one's canceled now. That one's canceled, yes. Before they used to allow 35 year olds to get the SRRV, but now it's only allowed for 50 years old and up. 50 and up. Mm -hmm. One of the more popular ones are the SRRV Classic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And can you go through some of the requirements for that one? Yeah, sure. So, we let me explain about the SRV smile first. It's actually sure. still going on, but oh. this is this is only if you want the deposit to stay with the Philippine Retirement Authority. So there's a 21 uh, 20,000 USD deposit, but this one you can't really convert into an investment compared to the SRRV Classic. So if you're okay with your $20,000 to stay with the PRA, then the SRRV smile is something that you can opt for as well. But is it if I was 36, could I get that? No, so all SRRV visas are 50 and up. 50 and up, okay. Yeah. So then in the classic, mm -hmm. that is based on income, if you have a pension or not? Mm -hmm. um, so for the SRRV classic, there's actually two things with it. So there is one with pension and without pension. So for this type of visa, you need at least a $800 worth of pension if you're single. And if you are married, at least a thousand USD. Um, worth of pension and then the deposit is without pension it's twenty thousand dollars with pension it's ten thousand um, dollars so the good thing about the SRRV classic is you can convert your deposit into an investment of either purchase of a condominium or a long-term lease of a house and lot so when they say long-term lease what is how long is the long-term lease? long-term lease is long-term <laughs> One year, five years? Uh, it has to be a minimum of 25 years. Oh, 25, 25 years. years. So this would yeah. be somebody who makes um, a 25-year lease on a lot of land, and then they build their house on it or something of that nature. Yes, yes, that's okay. basically it. And I think this is good because in the Philippines, as you know, foreigners cannot own land in the Philippines. There is a restriction. But you can uh, lease a land. You can so lease the land. Where you can stay in that And property. you own the whatever you build on top is yours yes. until the lease expires. Yes. That 20000 or 10000 deposit, is that going into a Philippine bank or is it, where does it go? Uh, you wire it to a PRA accredited bank account. So the PRA is the one that holds it. So PRA is the Philippine Retirement Authority in charge of approving the SRR visa. And then yes. if you decide, okay, I'm going to leave the Philippines, I don't want to mm -hmm. live here anymore, mm -hmm. How do you get it back? Yes, you can cancel. We've done this before. You can cancel your SRRV. It takes about one to three months, and then you get your deposit back to the account that you nominated for that deposit to be withdrawn. And what if you you, you pass away? What, what happens to that money? Does it go in limbo? Or? Mm -hmm. With that money, it really depends on where you're going to leave that at, because of course the money is a deposit and it's not their property, right? So when you pass on, um, you, th that will be your heirs and assigns that has to take care of that deposit for you. So either leave it in your will, mm -hmm. contact an attorney, mm -hmm. let them know that you have that money there, and make make the proper arrangements. Mm -hmm. So when when your time's over. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, one yeah, thing, sure. um, a lot of so you're, you're coming to the Philippines to retire, right? Um, you can actually prepare your estate here in the Philippines mm -hmm. through a lawyer. So if you're coming here and you want to live here and you want to like you know have your life here, and then obviously that time is going to come, right? So I would really suggest for you to prepare your estate ahead because you're going to have your properties here, your deposit here, so. Doing that and just looking forward in the future, which is mm -hmm. not a bad thing. I used to get so weird talking about this with clients. Right. It yeah. is, it is. But it is a reality, and I think you need to prepare for that. Yeah, that's the the end game, the you know, the end of our lives. We all know we're mm -hmm. going to go. When we were young, we did the easy life insurance, uh, mortgage insurance, so your wife uh, or, or spouse would get the house and get life insurance. 
when you leave the, the U.S., uh, you might not bring your life insurance policies with you. Mm -hmm. And you're buying things constantly, a motorbike, a car, mm -hmm. furniture. Who gets that? Mm -hmm. And it's better if you contact an attorney and do your estate planning. What's going to happen to your body? Mm -hmm. You want cremation? Send it back to the U.S. Mm -hmm. A lot of planning to do. Mm -hmm. And don't leave it for your loved ones to try to think what you wanted mm -hmm. when they're mourning your passing. Yeah, exactly. I actually, interestingly, I have a client who made us an executor of his will. Mm -hmm. So when he passes on, um, we will be the ones to take care of his funeral arrangements, to with his estate, dividing the property to his, uh, his assets to his children. So not a service we offer. Yes, it's sir. just I have a personal relationship yeah. with this client. <laughs> yeah. But we'll find we're going to find a couple good attorneys uh, in Cebu and Dumaguete that we can recommend to you. I'm mm -hmm. still researching them. I don't want to grab any name out of the hat. I want to make sure they're competent and they have a good reputation. Hundred percent. I can also recommend to you. I have yeah. like a, I know a pool of lawyers that I went to school to, mm -hmm. so I would love to recommend them to you when you contact Heidi all her information is down below the name of your company is uh, CNG consulting that stands for Cajas and Glazer consulting so I'm actually the co-owner I have a business partner um, that's why it's CNG <laughs> send her an email and ask about the service whatever kind of visa or service you need uh, inquire and they'll reply with with the pricing and the requirements needed and also if you need an attorney ask her mm -hmm. yes yeah that'd be all great yeah so on the classic, do we cover everything on that? Mm -hmm. uh, the deposit, the medical. Before you do those, do you have to get a physical mm -hmm. or of some sort? Yes, you need to get a medical exam, which is if they engage with us, we actually take care of that. So there is a list of medical um, medical uh, testing that you need to do at a clinic here in the Philippines. I've been getting questions if they can do it in the U.S. Um, you actually need to do it here in the Philippines. Uh, I can tell you some of the medical exams, if I can remember it correctly. <laughs> it's really a questionnaire. I filled it out. Yeah. It's a questionnaire for you, doctor. Are you mentally um, uh, stable? Are you a sexual deviant? You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's some funny questions to us, yeah. but it's important to, to, to the Philippine government because mm -hmm. they don't want uh, people who are mentally uh, so unbalanced mm -hmm. that they're danger to themselves in the community mm -hmm. and they also like they do a stool sample to see if you have worms and you know they're Urine. just checking yeah you know it's a third world country and uh, they just want to make sure that that you're good you're going to get an x-ray your chest x-ray your analysis uh, yeah. blood blood test blood test they're going to check you over pretty good you know not to make too much light of it they want to make sure you're healthy coming in into the country. Yes, hundred percent. And um, yeah. it's it's all good. It's easy. Um, any doctor in the Philippines knows how to do it, and uh, you'll recommend the mm -hmm. doctor for them mm -hmm. and take care of it. We actually will give the the request, doctor's request. That's part of the service as well. And then what my staff does is schedule you in for that day, take you to the doctor. So the entire time you have someone with you, just to make sure you get everything. And you don't waste your time going back and forth, the hospital, and then the Bureau of Quarantine. Now, with with an, a visa, special, re, what, what is the SR of uh, Special Resident Retirees Visa. With that, can you leave the country anytime you want? You, do you have to get exit clearances and all these things? Or? Mm. Part of the privilege of having an SRV is actually that you get multiple entry and exits to the Philippines, which um, that means you you don't need to file for an exit clearance. So exit clearance is when you stay for more than six months here in the Philippines and you have to go to immigration report and then file that exit clearance. With the SRV, you can just go in and out as you please because you're a, a permanent resident here in the Philippines. And you leave the country, is there a time limit? Can you only leave for like three months and come back? Or can you leave for two or three years and come back? Mm, you can actually, uh, as far as I know, you can actually leave like as for as long as you want. Because your deposit long. is here, your visa is here. So you can, it's, that's why it's called multiple entry and exits. So there's no limitation if you're going to take, you know, go back home for six months to the U.S., you know, visit, take care of family matters or whatever and mm -hmm. come back. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like you're a citizen of the Philippines, but you're not, mm -hmm. but you're a permanent resident mm -hmm. of, of the country. Oh, so I, I have to add, we have been getting questions where, oh, if I have an SRV, maybe if I stay there longer, I can file for citizenship in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, <laughs> I've been getting this question. Um, so in the Philippines, the way you become a citizen is, is it isn't like, for example, being in the U.S. where you go for your, your fiance and then you have a passport. In the Philippines, it's a lot harder because we we base our citizenship by blood. So it's not where you were born or how long you've stayed here, but you become a, a citizen by blood or uh, by passing a law to Congress, like telling it you are you are a yes. Filipino. Since. Yeah. So if one of your parents is Filipino, you can become a citizen. Mm -hmm. If you're born here and you and you left, you you always be a Philippine citizen. Mm. You might have to reapply, but you'll always be Filipino. Always be Filipino. Yes. Filipino is a Filipino. They have one uh, visa. That is the courtesy visa. Mm -hmm. And I really don't think that affects too many of my viewers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And oh, you actually have viewers that were former Filipinos. Yes, I do. <laughs> but I, I don't... <clears throat> well, maybe. I, I shouldn't speak for people. I would think if you're a foreign Filipino, you'd re renew your citizenship here. Mm -hmm. But there's a, a visa just for the foreign... Yeah, former Filipinos. And it's same requirements? Um, uh, not same requirements. Uh, S it's called an SRRV courtesy. So this one, it's a bit easier. You just need to show proof that you were a former Filipino. So you just need to bring either your birth certificate or your old passport. And your old passport. Mm -hmm. And they have a, I, I looked on, they have a small deposit for that mm -hmm, one, like mm -hmm. 1500 uh, 15 USD. USD into yes, that yes. one. Now the one everybody's interested in is uh, the one for the expanded courtesy. Yes. And that's the military one. Mm -hmm. And we'll go a little bit more in depth. And most of the requirements here are also required on the other SRRVs. Mm -hmm. If you do a police background check, you need to be a postile. Mm -hmm. yes. And you probably need that for most of the other. Yes. yes. So now, so what is an apostille? Okay, so I've been getting a lot of this question a lot because some of you guys just hear the word apostille when they're trying to apply, right? So um, to explain it in simpler terms, this is what happens. So if a document comes from another country, there's no way for us to verify that document, that the document is authentic, right? People can just bring any document and just say, oh, this is true. But the way for countries to actually verify each other's documents is through an apostille. So meaning when you take that document from the U.S., for example, bring it here to the Philippines, we'll see, oh, uh, the U.S. government has actually authenticated this document, so meaning we can accept this. This is actually, an apostille is actually a treaty between countries, 1961 Hague Convention. Oh, convention, <laughs> you did your homework. <laughs> So um, that's what an apostle is. It's just for the Philippine government to verify that your document is apost is authentic. That's basically it. And all the documents need to be in English. Yes, it needs to or be. Or translated into English yes. so, by the embassy, not, not by you. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you are coming from a country that has documents that are not in English, you would have to get this translated. And then that translation, together with the original document, will both be authenticated or apostilled. Now, with, with the, the military, you don't have to have been retired from the military. Yes. You just had to serve and be honorably discharged. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's other terms of honorable. It's anything but dishonorable discharge. Mm -hmm. There's some people have a general discharge, but is, accept, is accepted. And, of course, honorably discharged. And all military are welcomed here from... Like five different countries or all countries? Mm -hmm. All so far as all countries, we ask, we've asked uh, PRA about a bunch of countries that have a, uh, a military service, and they say as long as you have military service, then you can apply for the SRV expanded courtesy. Um, but a lot of the applicants that are coming to us are U.S. U.S. The <laughs> US vast majority veterans. U.S. Canada. My original understanding was it was from the World War II. The, U.S., Canada, Australia, Great Britain, who mm -hmm. helped liberate mm -hmm. the Philippines is where this originally came from. Mm -hmm. But now they've expanded to any country that they do, uh, that they have good relationships with militarily. Yes, yes, that's correct. Yeah. So on those visas, there's, there's a deposit. Mm -hmm. and, an and all of them have application fees, but we'll talk about the deposit. Mm -hmm. What is the deposit on that one? Uh, the deposit on that one is a thousand five hundred USD. So it's better than the other SRV we talked about because it's 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 not. It may be sizable for other people, but it's the smallest deposit that you can do um, when you're getting the SRV, and that's. It's worth it. It's worth the investment because you are getting permanent residency here in the Philippines. So I think the thousand five hundred USD is 
a good investment, mm -hmm. meaning you can stay here with peace of mind that you have a valid immigration status here in the Philippines. And what is the monthly, is there like a renewal fee every year with this, $10, $100? Mm -hmm. uh, it's $10, you just need to renew your ID. You renew your ID and that's mm -hmm. basically the cost for them to make a new ID card mm -hmm. for you. Yes. And also, with these retirement visas, do you have to go in every year and renew your ACR card? Um, you just you don't have an ACR I, I card for Anymore. the SRV. Yeah, so that's one of the privileges of the SRV. You are exempted from having an ACR I card. So for those of you don't don't know, an ACR I card is an alien certificate of registration card. This is your identification card here in the Philippines. You normally get it um, in the second extension of your tourist visa. Um, and you use this whenever, as an identification here in the Philippines. Now with the SRRV, you actually get an SRRV ID card that is used um, much like an ACRI card, but it says there that you are an SRRV visa holder. And the other thing, like when you go to open a bank account, mm -hmm. is it much easier with the SRRV? Do you have to wait a, a period of time before you can open a bank account? Um, it's honestly better once you have a, a valid visa here in the Philippines. So a lot of people try. You can do it with your ACRI card, but I think you have to have stay here in the Philippines for at least six months. Unless you have a friend in the bank, you know, <laughs> which will make things a lot easier. But normally banks will ask you if you've stayed here in the Philippines for at least six months. But having the SRRV, um, which states that you are residing here in the Philippines, makes it a lot easier for you and the bank to trust you. In, in opening a bank account here in the Philippines. So that's an easier way of going about getting a bank account. If Of all the SRRVs, if you have military service, use this one. Mm -hmm. it's, yes. it's by far the deposits minimal compared to the rest. Mm -hmm. And the money you're going to save on your visa fees for mm -hmm. the three years mm -hmm. will pay for itself. Yes, and exactly. And also with that, uh, do you get People always ask me about the discount for old, you mm -hmm. know, the senior citizen discount. Mm -hmm. Now, I take advantage of the senior citizen lines yes. in, in the bank yes. and in the immigration and all that, but uh, there's a discount at certain stores and restaurants, and they ask for, I noticed they ask for your ID. Seniors, senior discount mm -hmm. must show proper ID. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. Is this the proper ID? It, mm -hmm. for the people and the senior? It depends. It depends. Some establishments actually accept this, mm -hmm. but um, it would be better if you apply for a senior citizen ID because mm -hmm. they need that They need that information for tax purposes. Mm -hmm. And they have, they have like a control number where they can also deduct that from their own taxes. That's something I didn't know about. They have a senior citizen ID. Yes, we have a senior citizen ID here in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. If you're 60 and up, you 60. can get this uh, senior citizen ID that allows you to get discounts. And we love discounts. We Les love like <laughs> they add up. They add up. But with that, do you have to be a permanent resident to get that? Mm, yeah. Yes. So that's only available to the permanent residents. I know people are going to say, oh, I got one. Yeah, everybody has an exception. Somebody's going to let you through the line. But the basic rule is you need to be a permanent resident mm -hmm. or citizen. Now, the 1500 you put into the bank as a deposit, and, and then there's an application fee. What about if you got a wife and kids? Mm -hmm. uh, can they come with you or is it a separate application for each one? Mm -hmm. So when you apply for the SRV, you're actually allowed a maximum of two dependents. So that means that you can take your, your wife and your kid and have them uh, as a dependent to your visa. So if it's more than two dependents, you need to have 15,000 USD deposit for the additional dependent. So if you have five in your family, you're going to put in... 30,000, one for, mm -hmm. one for, one each. for each. But we're all older, maybe it's just you and your wife, maybe it's a, a child that's gonna be going to college here. Yes. And yes. then there's no additional fees with that. Mm -hmm. What is the biggest advantage, other than the travel in and out of the country, which mm -hmm. I think is a, a great advantage, do you, can you get a driver's license off of this and all, every other, government document you need mm -hmm. this is off of this. Mm -hmm. So for expats here in the Philippines, you actually, if you've stayed here for 120 days, your your driver's your foreign driver's license is valid here for 120 days. Once you reach that at 120 days, you actually have to convert it into a Philippine driver's license. So having the SRV will actually make that a lot easier because the LTO or the Land Transportation Office actually asks about your um, immigration status here in the Philippines.
so that would definitely help to get the driver's license but it's not automatic not it's not when you have your srv already you need to have stayed here consecutively for 120 days 120 days yeah. consecutive with, with the srv can you borrow money anything you know like can you get a mortgage with this or is that something that just with filipino residents or mm. permanent uh, or is that just with filipino citizens okay so a lot I've, I've been asked a lot about this question um with regards to getting a mortgage here in the philippines the thing about banks here in the philippines is you really need to establish a good relationship with the bank so i suggest that once you open a bank account here in the philippines get um, close with the manager <laughs> but it does help if you have a filipino spouse so um, I've asked a bank about this and you need to have at least like one to two years relationship with the bank just to show that you have, you know, a good amount of money and a good amount of, um, uh, I don't know, collateral or something like that to be able to get a loan. But it really does help if you have a Filipino spouse to be able to do this because that will be where your loan, uh, that your spouse can be the one that they can be sure that this, is, this person is going to return here to the Philippines and is based here in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about marriage in the Philippines. You're a foreigner, you come over here from you know the US or Canada, and you find a girl you like. And I say, say I want to get married to you. Mm -hmm. How do we get a marriage license? Um, there are actually a couple of requirements that you need to get at your local government. So the place where you want to get married. Um, part of the requirements for the marriage license is number one, your birth certificate your divorce papers if you were once married and divorce um, your spouse's birth certificate of course uh, your visa in the Philippines whether you're in tourist or you have a permanent visa here already um, what else you also need to get the documents whatever documents come from the the uh, the US or the, your country of origin you also need to get this you also need to get a certificate of no marriage from the Philippine Statistics Authority or PSA these these documents that need to you, you need to get here in the Philippines you actually can order them online and they can drop it to you um, door to door. Um, another thing is um, for US um, for US uh, expats that come here you actually need a certificate of legal capacity to marry, which you can do here in the Philippines through a lawyer. You get that through a lawyer. You guys remember when Jan and I got married. We got ours through a lawyer. Yes. The city of Dumaguete would not accept that. They wanted one from the embassy. So we just went to the next city of Bacon and they accepted mm. it. So, so it really depends on the government, local government yes. or the province where you're going to get married at. And that's with any government issued thing. When you get a driver's license, you go to one LTO, it might have a different requirement than a different LTO yeah. in a different island. Yeah. Are they hard to get the marriage license, the time frame? Uh, the time frame, normally we've done it for a client before, we managed to get it in a month as long as you have all of the documentary requirements that I mentioned earlier. Um, what would be difficult is if the foreign spouse, of course, doesn't have his initial documents. That'd be your yeah. divorce papers, guys? Yeah. Bring your original with the raised uh, notary seal on it, not, yeah. a, not a photocopy. Yes, yes. What else do they need? Passport? Passport, your, of course, your visa here. So Showing you can, you're legally allowed to be here. Yes, yes. You're not an overstaying expat or you're not an illegal expat that's staying here in the Philippines. Is overstaying a bad thing? Overstaying is a bad thing, yes. <laughs> what is the punishment for overstaying? Uh, hefty penalties. And if you've overstayed for more than six months, you would have to file a motion for reconsideration which takes about a month to process and that motion for reconsideration you actually need to have a valid reason why you overstayed here in the Philippines and if you're here as a tourist and you wanna stay just please make sure to update your 9A or your tourist visa so that you don't get fined because um, I can tell you just from the if your motion for reconsideration is released you need to pay 15 to 25k in arrears that's just arrears um, and then plus the penalty of your missed tourist visa extensions. Wow. Can so add up pretty they, big. They add up. They could be like a thousand USD. Um, I've had a client who had to pay like two, three thousand USD because he didn't renew for like two if, years. If you, if, you're, if you didn't renew, you're overstayer and they catch you or you turn yourself in and you don't have the money, do you go to jail? You don't go to jail, but you're going to have to find a way to pay that money somehow. Because 
One of the reasons is um, you're going to be a delinquent uh, foreigner and you can get blacklisted. But once you're blacklisted, then they deport you without you paying the fees? Yes, they will deport you. <laughs> they okay. will deport so you. if you don't want to pay and you never want to pay, they'll deport you and you don't have to pay them, but you never come back. Mm, you never come back. But you can lift your blacklist, by the way, but it takes yeah. like uh, a couple of months before you can even do that. And so they'll just... want their money by then. Too. Yes. <laughs> so just try to be good, please, when you're here. <laughs> It's not that expensive to, to pay your monthly visa or every six months for your visa. Yeah. If you can't afford that, you shouldn't be here. Mm, 100%. Driver's license. If I have an American driver's license, but it does not have a motorcycle endorsement, mm -hmm. can I ride a motorcycle here? Um, you just have to request. Go. So when you apply for a driver's license here in the Philippines, you actually need to take a bunch of tests. So you just have to inform LTO that, okay, I want to drive a motorcycle here in the Philippines. Can we include this on the conversion? Um, so that once you take the exam, they also give you the exam for the motorcycle so that you can have it added on your driver's license. Mm -hmm. Now, taking the test, it's like a written test uh, in front of the computer screen, yes. isn't it? Yes, yes it's a written yeah. test. And isn't there a certain point in time where they'll just exchange, or not exchange, but they'll just accept your uh, your foreign driver's license so you don't have to take tests? Uh, I yeah. believe that's between 90 days and six months. Yeah, yeah. There's a small window where you can do that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, normally 120 days after that you can, you can convert your driver's license. Yeah, but yeah. if you go past that six month period from entry of the country, then you have to do all the testing. Yes, yes, you have to do all the testing. Yes, yeah. it's a very small window to get it yeah. properly done. And that's something you'd help me with. If I've been here eight months and now I need a driver's license, would you help me get it? Yes, we can help you with the conversion. There's actually a bunch of other paperwork that you need to do. Um, you have to schedule with LTO as well. That one we can take care of you, for, mm -hmm. for you. Um, because, again, in the Philippines, everything is so chaotic. <laughs> I noticed that at the LTO when Jan and I were trying to do it ourselves, you have end of the line privilege. Mm -hmm. Whatever the line is, you're at the end of it. With your service, do you help them get to the front line where they don't wait for four or five hours in the LTO office? So the thing that we do is we have someone else line up for you. So you can go enjoy your cup of coffee, have lunch or something, and then we'll call you once it's your turn. That's right. <laughs> you're special and they allow that. They yes. allow that. Yes. So. So you don't have to wait in line. That's the advantages of having somebody help you who knows the system. And they're doing everything legal. It's all correct. But they know how to work the system better than me and you would. Yeah. So that's our goal here. We want to make it as convenient for you as possible. Yeah, thank you. We understand that our government doesn't make it convenient. and I always say there's a thing. You either have time or money. If you have no money and lots of time, go do it yourself. Wait in line. But if you have some money you know you're not you have money and you enjoy your time have somebody do it for you get the process rolling have them do all the the heavy lifting yes and you know time is a finite resource you yeah. don't have a lot of it i so. only got a few years <laughs> left oh my god so let's talk about the 13a mm -hmm. visa okay so the 13a visa is actually the spousal visa here in the philippines so if you're married to a filipino spouse normally a filipina spouse <laughs> You are um, you are qualified to get your 13A visa. So the 13A visa is a two-tier process. You have to apply twice. The first application is your 13A probationary, um, which is valid for one year. But three months before the expiration of your one-year 13A visa, you have to then apply for your 13A permanent, which is now, I think you just have to renew it every five years with your ACR I-card. But that allows you to permanently reside here in the Philippines with your wife or husband as a petitioner for that um, for that visa. So the requirements for this is very easy. After you get married, you will normally get a certificate of marriage here in the Philippines issued by the Philippine Statistics Authority. Um, once you have that, we will apply for an NBI clearance and National Bureau of Investigation clearance, just stating that you don't have any existing criminal records here in the Philippines, so again, please be nice. <laughs> Don't get a record here in the Philippines. Um, and uh, your wife's birth certificate, very important that to make sure that she is Filipino. Um, and then a bunch of paperwork, and then you're all good. You can apply for the 13A. How long is a 13A visa good for? 
Uh, 13A visa is basically like a permanent visa. So the renewal, you, you just need to report to immigration every year. It's called annual report. You just need to pay around 500 pesos for the report. But the renewal takes about, um, you just need to renew every five years. Every five years. Every five the, years. The, the ID the card, card itself. The card, yeah. Okay. yeah. Now let's get into the touchy subjects of 13A. What if your partner is mad at you? Mm. Can she have you escorted out of the country? It depends on how mad your wife is. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's like this. If your wife is mad. So in the 13A, your wife is actually the petitioner of your visa. So that's why I always ask my clients whether or not they would, they would always ask, should I get an SRV or a 13A? Um, that really depends on you and on how comfortable and how good your relationship is with your wife. If you want your visa to be uh, solely reliant on your merit and not reliant on anyone, then please get the SRV. If you have a really good relationship with your wife and you trust her 100%, then you get the 13A. So if she's mad at you, Yes, she can go to immigration and kick your ass. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> we allow that word. It's a legal word. <laughs> yeah. So, so guys, be careful. Now, there's no divorce in the Philippines, technically. Yes. They have an annulments. Mm -hmm. If you get an, an annulment of your marriage, do you lose your 13A? Yes, since the 13A is dependent on your marriage to your Filipino spouse. So if your marriage has been annulled or considered void, then that also cancels your 13A visa. And if you leave the country by yourself, can you get back in on this visa? Or do you need to have your wife um, like a, a Balapayan? Malik Bayan visa? Visa. Do you need to have your wife with you when you come back in on the 13A? No. Uh, with the 13A, you can leave and come back for... Without her. Without her. Okay. Yeah. Well, if you go back for business or whatever, well, that's good to know. Mm -hmm. What is the biggest downfall of any clients with the 13A? Is it the, the broken marriage? It is the broken marriage, broken marriage and the extremely angry wife who can, <laughs> who can withdraw your 13A from you. Just as a curiosity on that, uh, so she goes to Bureau of Immigration, says, I want to remove my sponsorship mm -hmm. of the husband. Is there a hearing or something, or, or is it just automatic? Just automatic, but I think they will ask for grounds why you want to revoke. So it's a, it's a process yeah. too. It's an expensive process, probably. It is. A little bit, yeah. So it's not like you just have an argument. She's going to run down to the corner mm -hmm. and get you thrown out. But if you have, my opinion, if you have your choice between the expanded courtesy and the 13A, I would do the expanded. Yes. Because of the cost is minor. Minor. Yeah. yeah. It's so. the same as 13A, more or less the same as 13A. And the process to get a 13A, just a couple of months? A couple of months, three to four months. Okay. Yeah. Now, a lot of guys, they get married. They come here, they get married, just like I did. And then they say, well, I'm not going to pay the tourist visa fees anymore. Mm -hmm. Let's go fly to Singapore and come back. And I get on that Balik Bayan? Balik Bayan visa? That's a family visa, supposedly, right? Is that yeah. what it stands for? Family yeah. visa? What's the advantages of that visa? Um, it's just the same as a tourist visa. It just means that you will have, um, I think now, like one year with the Balik Bayan visa. But if you're married to a Filipino anyways, just get the 13A. 13A. Because once you go get out of the country, you will have to start again. And then it's just, it's just, it's just a hassle. It's a hassle yeah. visa. I know it's a hassle visa. A lot of guys do it, though. They go travel and then they think, I have one year on this visa. And they plan to do the 13A, but they don't. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, you lose it too if you leave the country and you come back by yourself. Yeah. yeah, and what if you stay for more than a year, or you're no longer, you know, uh, good, in good health enough to travel? Then getting a, a 13A is definitely helpful. Get the proper visas mm -hmm. that that you need for here. Mm -hmm. And uh, anything else on the marriage front? Anything? Make sure you love your wife. Yeah, <laughs> make sure you love your wife. Yes, yeah. definitely. Should we answer that question about the divorce in the Philippines? Sure. Yeah, so the, one of the comments that I saw was, because uh, I, I spoke briefly about uh, divorce um, on our previous video, and someone said divorce is not allowed in the Philippines. Yes, it is not allowed in the Philippines, but there are also situations where the foreign expat wants to divorce his Filipino wife. So you can actually divorce your Filipino wife in your country, That's and cool. that, w and once you've divorced her successfully in your country, um, your Filipina spouse can have a judicial recognition of that divorce, 
and then she can get married again here in the Philippines. This is know. a fairly new ruling in 2018 from the Supreme Court. Um, because before we weren't allowed to do this. No, before you'd you'd marry a girl and the guy would leave back to someone, never mm -hmm. coming back. Yeah. And she was in a box. She was married and could never remarry. Yeah, could, you could never remarry, which isn't fair for that Filipinas, wasn't fair at all. of course. Yeah. So this is now something new wherein things are being made fair and the Filipina spouse can actually take that divorce and then get, the, uh, get that declared here in the Philippines and then she can then get married again. The tourist visa. Mm -hmm. well, let's touch on the tourist visa a little bit. It's good for, you can stay here 36 months continuous. Yes. But the big thing going around the last few months on the internet here is initially you fly in, you get a, a visa on arrival, mm -hmm. 30 days. Yeah. And then the, you get 29 or 30 more days, you go to immigration, you pay for a one month. Mm -hmm. get, people were talking about it was going to be a free 59 days mm -hmm. at the airport. Mm -hmm. Did you hear anything about that? I actually haven't heard, but most of our clients when they arrive here, it's normally 29 days. 29, 29 days. days. Yeah, I think it was just a rumor or maybe it was in a bill and it didn't pass. Mm -hmm. But it's 29 days on arrival mm -hmm. and then you have to renew at before the end of the 29 days another 30 days. Mm -hmm. And then after that, then you can get the uh, multiple month fees. Two months or six months. Depending on where you're at. Yeah, so very important, I think. So, uh, again, let's, let's repeat that. Arrival, 29 days. Uh, first extension is 30 days. You pay around uh, 2,830 pesos. Um, next is you then do your two months extension. So upon this like second extension, you need to pay for your ACRI card. So don't be surprised if on your second extension it's a lot bigger. Uh, it's roughly around 8,000 pesos mm -hmm. on the second extension, but you get two months stay. And then after that, you just need to do either two months or six months. For two months, you pay around 3,030 to get your two months extension. Now people using your service, do they have to be, well, we're in Cebu right now. Do they have to be in Cebu or Manila or can they be anywhere? You can be anywhere. We can extend your visa for you. You don't even have to show up. We just need um, your signature on the app, uh, application form and then that's it. We take your passport, uh, apply it with immigration. And you, you normally, we do this thing called same day visa extension. Um, if you can get it done within the morning, then we can return it to you on the same day. If we do it during the afternoon, then it's next day. Or if there are other issues, then it might be a few days, but normally other on the day or next day. Or if you're f very far from us, then we need to ship the passport back to you. Okay, yeah. so say we're, we're far. How do, how do you get the passport and the application signed? Mm. So what we normally do is we mail the application form to the client. They will sign it and then they have to mail their passport to us. So the always the qu qu issue is, oh my God, I'm gonna mail you my passport. <laughs> is this safe? Uh, so we've used uh, LBC. It's a very trusted courier LBC in the Philippines. LBC is a good courier. Yeah, yes. one, of, one of the biggest couriers here in the Philippines. We ship it with them. And then when you ship your passport with LBC, there's actually insurance that you can avail of. So you just have to declare the value of your passport. Normally I would advise the value be how much it would take for you to get another passport. That would be the value. And then your passport is insured um, so that when we receive it or if ever they lose it, which we haven't experienced yet, mm -hmm. uh, someone losing their passport, then you know you, you, you have that peace of mind that you can always, you know, someone is shouldering your loss of the passport. And um, again, we've never tried a passport. So if lost. someone's way out in the province, yeah, uh, it's going to take a few days. Yeah. The process of getting it to, to Heidi's mm -hmm. in Heidi's office. And her processing it probably in one day, mm -hmm. but still you have to have it sent back to them. Yes, we sent it back uh, on the day that uh, the visa has been extended. So make sure you have enough time as a buffer mm -hmm. uh, so you don't become late and get the penalties for the late. Yes, yes. Do they have to pay uh, express lane fees? Uh, yes, you have to pay express lane fees because normally if you don't, it would take two days before that visa is released because right. you're not the one doing it. Um, since you're asking an, an agency to do it, you need to pay for express link fees. Yeah. And in Dumaguete, I noticed no matter, 
I get my passport back the next day. Mm -hmm. I still pay the express lane fee. Mm -hmm. They they just charge you mm -hmm. the express lane. It's sort of become a common practice. Even if it's not express. Even if it's not express. <laughs> you're doing it yourself and you say, I'll be back. I haven't picked up my ACR card yet. It's like two months sitting there. Oh. So <laughs> it's all like, well, anything you want to add? Um, okay, so one question that we normally get asked, um, especially if you come to the Philippines, of course, you're going to be traveling around a lot, like different um, islands. So we normally get asked if they need their passport to board a flight. Oh. Yeah, if they need their passport to bo board a local flight. So the answer is you don't need your passport to you board a local flight. Oh, can I add one more thing? Sure can. Um, so if we ever, um, you know, if you've engaged with our services, we really appreciate feedback. So if there's anything we can improve on with the calls, with how we deliver our services, I really appreciate that as a business owner. And, you know, we're doing videos to be a lot more informative to expats. And if there is any information that you want to ask, feel free to call us. If there's information that we missed on or it's not updated, like I'm, I have no problem admitting to mistakes. <laughs> Um, I do every day. Mm. Ask Janet. She'll yeah. tell you all the mistakes I make in a day. Yeah, exactly. So if there's anything like that, just feel free to reach out to us and we'll have it corrected. Because I believe in, in giving a correct, updated, and proper information out there. Leave, leave any of your questions below in the comments section. We're going to do a live stream with Heidi coming up pretty soon. And we'll, ask, we'll make sure those questions are asked. And you know me, I answer all the comments. If I can give you a good answer, I will. If not, I'll reach out to Heidi to get the correct answer. Okay. Well, Heidi, the name of your company is? CNG Consulting. We are located in Cebu and Manila, but we operate nationwide. So. And she's been very helpful to a number of our viewers. So if you have any questions, feel free to contact her. All her contact information is in the description below. Email, whatever she has, everything, mm -hmm. her phone number, WhatsApp. I don't even know what WhatsApp is. <laughs> but all her information is down below, easily to contact, and she'll get right back to you with yeah. your questions. Oh, so okay. thanks for watching. Until next time. Whew. <laughs>